Volunteer Marine Rescue Squadrons in the Wide Bay are facing further financial strain after missing out on extra government funding for the 17th year in a row. Stations are being forced to operate on just $26 a day and are pleading for help. When you run into trouble out on the water, yeah, boat club rescue, boat club rescue. these are the people you want to see. But rescuers are currently the ones in strife as they struggle to operate on a shoestring budget of $26 a day. So it doesn't leave much left over for maintenance on the vessels or repairs. The Harvey Bay Volunteer Marine Rescue Team churns through $20,000 on petrol alone each year. That's also how much funding the squadron receives from the state government. Let's face it, it is. It's very, very light on. By the time that they take out the monies that they need to pay for insurance and whatever else comes out, we end up with about $9,600 a year. Last year's total running costs were more than $110,000. We do sausage sizzles and all that sort of stuff um, to, to remain viable. It's an increasing struggle. Other Queensland teams are in danger of going under. Wide Bay squadrons could have to donate their fundraising to save them. Some of them, I've been told, are, are thinking about taking their boats out of the water. Last month alone, Harvey Bay crews responded to 29 calls for help. Now they're issuing their own plea. We do need the funding to carry on doing this. The government says it's exploring options for increased funding. Michelle Retray, 7 News. Serving the wide bay Burnett. this is 7 Local News. By the God, he writes an SOS in the sand after running aground. Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. A yachty has been rescued off Fraser Island after rough seas snapped his anchor line and drove his vessel aground. Michael Claffey was washed up on an isolated part of the island and walked kilometres in the dark to find help. Beached and broken, the jasmine was a gut-wrenching sight for her skipper, Michael Claffey. Strong winds and huge swells overnight battered the vessel, running it aground near Coongal Creek on the western side of Fraser Island. Volunteer marine rescuers initially needed help themselves to reach shore. We can't come in. If you can come out on your dinghy, that will be good. Yeah, our main job is to just get this guy safely back home. The 11-metre yacht's anchor line snapped in rough seas, setting it on a collision course. Well, fairly sizeable waves coming through, especially once it started pushing me in closer to shore. They just got beat. The lone boat he made it to shore, where he endured a sleepless night in freezing conditions looking for help. I was soaking wet to the skin and it rained while I was walking. Um, it was very cold. Mr Claffey walked for hours in the dark. He even wrote an SOS note in the sand before stumbling across campers. I was lucky enough that these good people over here, they fed me and looked after me. I was like a long lost child. They were wonderful. Ironically, it was the skipper's last trip on board the yacht before he was going to sell it. I think the appeal of the sea diminishes a little bit when that, something like that happens to you. The stricken yacht is badly damaged and will have to be salvaged. You never expect the worst to happen and it, and it did. Michelle Vitray, 7 News. This is Win News. And Volunteer Marine Rescue opens its doors. Volunteer Marine Rescue opened its doors over the weekend to help raise much-needed funds for its operations. Volunteers ran demonstrations while giving free safety advice. They brave choppy seas to rescue lives when things go wrong. The highly skilled crew showing locals just how they do it and the resources needed to keep them running. Very impressive. feel nice and safe being out on the water now, knowing that these fellas are here to come and rescue me if I need, need to be rescued. But the impact of mocked up rescues was amplified when an emergency alert turned into the real deal. VMR going straight into action. Two men forced to make an emergency landing north of Awena Creek after their ultralight plane lost power. We've been tasked to go up and bring the two people back. We cannot bring the, uh, uh, the aircraft back, but uh, 
uh, at this stage they, the vessel has departed and uh, en route to pick them up and bring them back. The open day aimed to encourage more boaties to sign up as members, offering two options. The first one is $42, which if they need our assistance, we just uh, charge them the fuel that we use. The second one is for $75, and that gives them two free assists anywhere within our operational area. And more volunteers are needed to help them man the 24-hour service. If you didn't have VMR or Coast Guard, uh, I think there'd be a lot more uh, dramas out on the open water. Police, uh, the water police are very good, but they don't have the resources that we do. The group plans to donate some of the proceeds from the day to a critically ill member who needs special care. Karen Broadhurst, Win News. Bruff. This is Seven Local News. Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. A major search was launched overnight after five local teenagers failed to return after a fishing trip off Torquay Beach. The boys had been missing for two hours when worried loved ones raised the alarm. An anxious wait for friends and family. The five boys aged between 12 and 14 had been due to return at 2pm. By 4, they still weren't back. Water police, rescue helicopters and marine rescue boats scoured a 160 square kilometre area in desperation. The biggest thing about searching at sea is the, uh, the wind, the tides, the currents, the time at sea. Then, just after 8pm, the news they'd been praying for. Within 10 metres, we wouldn't have seen them. We're just right on the outskirts of the, the, the light. So they were very lucky. Loved ones rushed to meet them. Sonia Smith has never been so relieved to see her son. One nightmare. Never wished on anyone. It was meant to be a short trip out to a yacht moored just a few metres off Torquay Beach. Instead, the boys decided to venture out further. Then we just went out fishing. Then we went to Woody Island. Then we went around the corner and was doing hill climbs and stuff. When they returned to their dinghy, the tide had moved dramatically. The boat was 20 metres in and there was no water around it and we tried to lift it. They waited for four hours, cold and alone, then worried about the consequences. Because we saw the big spotlights and stuff and we are like, oh no, and we are thinking of taking off. <laughs> they were cold so we put them on board our vessel and we put blankets around them and brought them back here and they had a cup of tea. And... Now safe in the arms of loved ones, they won't be heading out alone any time soon. What were you worried about what your parents were saying you got back? Oh, yeah, kind of, but not really. Oh, yeah, kind of, actually. Never again? No. No more fishing. <laughs> Kate Lyman, 7 News. This is Win News. Harvey Bay's emergency services put their skills to the test today. Water Police and the Volunteer Marine Rescue Service were among several groups taking part in the realistic search and rescue operation. They braved the seas to rescue lives when things go wrong. But even these highly skilled crews need to brush up on their skills. We've tried to make the scenario as real as possible so there's very little detail and it's done in real time. So we obviously work with a lot of other agencies, volunteer agencies and professional agencies. So it gives us a chance to work with them and uh, just to identify any areas that we can improve on. And this mocked up scenario did just that. The distress call activated, the region's emergency group straight into action, just like the real deal. We've just uh, had a major heart attack here in, in Hytelix. We've just knocked the uh, main Sarmac off, so he has to hand over to his, to his uh, to IC to carry on. This is the 30-foot cruiser that's believed to have caught on fire just out from Mackenzie's Wharf near Kingfisher Bay. Several people on board reportedly injured. Our people have been down there and done the first aid, and now they're transporting them back to uh, ambulance care. Some already dead. And uh, sadly, we've had deceased in there as well, but for exercise purposes only and the survivors yet to be found. And, uh, we've had people missing on Fraser Island and swam ashore. We've had to locate them. There is a lot of uh, on-scene there where it's, it's very stressful for the guys on scene and they are under a lot of pressure and there's a lot of information going their way, so it, it's very dynamic. It's the second real-life rescue exercise run this year. Karen Broadhurst, Win News.
They are ready to respond to your calls for help. We complete over 1,000 flights in the Fraser Coast Wide Bay region every year. This is VMR 466. Standing by on 73. Community Action Partners, AGL Action Rescue Helicopter, Volunteer Marine Rescue Harvey Bay, Wind News and Harvey Bay Boat Club. We're helping keep AGL Action Rescue Helicopters in the air and Volunteer Marine Rescue Boats on the water. Your Community Action Partners. You'll never know when you'll need their help. Welcome back to Win Local News. It is an organisation designed to help others. And that'll now be a whole lot easier for Harvey Bay's Volunteer Marine Rescue, thanks to the Harvey Bay RSL. The club has generously decided to supply the entire fleet's fuel for the next three years, up to the value of $54,000. Some of our members have uh, fought to save the country in previous times, and now we're uh, helping to save uh, people who are stranded at sea. The club says it was an easy decision, especially given the popularity of boating amongst its members. I'm a boaty too, but uh, that's not the main reason. Our main reason is supporting anybody like VMR. VMR says it'll now spend less time fundraising and applying for grant funding, more time out on the water. I'm over the moon and these guys have been so good to us. Boaties who do get into trouble can expect to see the new Harvey Bay RSL rescue craft out 